Hello and welcome to another Learn Learn Scratch tutorial and today we're going to show you how to make a um, match the pairs concentration type game. So let's have a quick demonstration of what we're doing. Here we go, there you go. So if you click on the item it shows the item. There we go and if I'm any good, which I don't seem to be today, let's see if I can find a pair. Oh no. There we go. If you find a pair it takes it off the screen and if you find all the pairs, which normally are a bit quicker than this, but uh, not very good today. Oh, ah, plane. There we go. And that one there. That one there. That one there. Nope. Where's the lion? Haha, -ha, lion. There's my ball. There's scratch and an apple. That's scratch. So, no, no. There we go. And then if you get all of them, there you go. It tells you how long and 62 seconds. That's pretty rubbish. Okay, so that's how we're going to make the game. There we go. That's the game we're going to make. So let's get started. So first of all, we create ourselves a new game. And once we've created a new game, that's good. Let's rename it to Card Matching Game Tutorial. There we go. Card Matching Game. And the first card we're going to do is we'll use Scratch actually, we'll make a, a card out of Scratch. So we're going to need two cards, but let's just uh, let's get rid of that one there. There we go. And we're going to keep it in vector mode because it's quite easy to do. And we'll just create our first card there. Let's put it around Scratch the Cat. Good stuff. Brilliant. There you go. So there's our first card. There it is face up. And if we duplicate it and get rid of... There we go. Let's just get rid of Scratch out of there. I want to move. Oh, no, I'm just deleting all little bits now. Oh no. There, let's try clicking. That's better. Uh, at the moment it's selecting the card in front of the cat. We don't want to do that. So let's send that back a layer, which means we should be able to click on scratch. And let's get rid of scratch. And then what we'll do is we'll paint a solid colour for the um for the card. No, oh, it's just done there. It's picked up something. Let's just get rid of that. There we go, solid colour blue. Uh, it is important for this tutorial that you use a solid colour. Don't use um, a gradient for this colour when you're doing... Uh, don't use one of the gradients here. Use a solid colour for the way it works, which you'll see in a bit. So there you go. So at the moment we've got the uh, card face up and the card face down. Good. Perfect. Excellent. So, once we've done that, don't go ahead and start creating loads of sprites. Don't do that because um, you're going to run into uh, a problem. We'll just get it working on one sprite, and then we'll start to add more and more and more. Good. Now, there we go. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, that card's a bit big. We need to make him a bit smaller. So we're going to set him to a certain size. Here we go, data. Um, now, I could just type in here. I could just put change si uh, set size to and then a percentage here. But what will happen is if I set it manually here, and then I copy the sprite to, let's say, 50 sprites or whatever, 30 sprites, however many cards we're going to have. If I change my mind and I decide I want my card smaller, then I'm going to have to change this 50 times. That's that's quite a lot of work. So what we're going to do instead of that is um, we're going to click on the stage. We're going to say when start clicked, and we're going to create a variable. Let's call it card size. There we go. And at the start of the game, when we press start, let's set the card size. I think about 60% should do it. There we go. Set card size to 60. So that's on the stage. Um, I always put all my, my global variables, the variables that I'm going to use throughout the game, I always put that here in the stage rather than a sprite, so it's easier to find. Now, you don't have to, but I just find it easy to, uh, easy to find. And now what we can do is we can set the card size to card size. So when we click start... It will, it will set the card size there, and then it will change the size to that. So hopefully, if I do that, oh, there we go. What's happened there? Set card size to, that's not right. Ah, oh, I don't know why it did that, but there you go, it's working now. Set card size to 60. So it's gone to 60%, that's about right. Good. So we got our card size to uh, 60%, and what we want to do as well is we want to move our card to a random location or, uh, on the board. Now, it's going to work in like a grid sort of manner. Here we go, like a grid, like 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 
So how are we going to do that? Well, again, we could manually set it so it goes, just goes to a random place using random. Um, and we could put numbers in there. So we'd have to say to go from somewhere between, let's have a look here, minus, about minus 210 through to, on the x value, through to maybe, what's that, 200, 210 on the, y, on the x value. So somewhere between minus 200 and 200. But if we just put set that to random between minus 200 and 200, it could be anywhere along here. We want to move it in steps. So like here, or here, or here, or here, or here. So what we can do to do that is we can set it. There we are, let's have a look. And we can we can use a bit of... Uh, a bit of fancy maths. So let's have a look and let's go set x, set x, let's have a look, set x. We're going to need to set x and we're going to need to set y. There we go, set x and set y. Uh, and what it's going to do is we're just going to say we'll start at minus, let's have a look, what could be minus, about minus 210, minus 210. So I, again, I could put minus 210 here like the minimum x value, minus 210. But again, if I do this for all of my cards and then I make a mistake or I want to change it, I'm going to have to change every single card. So what do I do instead? Well, go back to the stage and let's create a new variable and let's call this min x. And then while we're here, we might as well create one called min y. There we go. Minimum y. There we go. So um, we'll set minimum x and set minimum y. Let's have a look. Uh, minimum x to minus, let's do minus 200 for the moment. Minimum y to minus, look at there, minus 140. Let's try minus 140. Let's have a go with that, minus 140. There you go, so there's the minimum, that's the minimum amount it could be. So let's go back to my cat. So set x to the minimum, that minimum amount, there we go. The minimum amount that it could be and set the y to the minimum y. And we're going to add something. Well, what we're going to add? Well, we're going to add multiples, some random multiple of um, a certain amount. Well, how much is it going to be? Well, let's find the easiest way to work it out is what is the width of the the, uh, the card? Well, let's have a look. So if you watch these x values, the uh, the width of the card is minus, so minus 240 to minus 180, roughly. So it's about 60, 65. So if it's about 60 or 65 wide, we probably want our minimum jump up to be about about 80, about 80, I think. So again, we could put it in here plus some random amount of 80, multiple of 80, but we don't know if we're right. So let's set another one. Uh, there we go. And there we go. And uh, oh, oh, it's no good. Let's create a new variable. And this is the step for the x value. So the step x, this is how far it's going to step across each time. And the step x, I think it's about 70, I think. We don't know. We can change it later. This is why we're using variables. And let's create another one called step y. And this is how far we're going to step it each time with a y. I think about 100, maybe. Let's have a look. Minus, so there's my y. Minus 140 to minus 50, so 90. Yeah, so about 100 should do it. Let's have a look. So each step on the y should be about 100 stuff so here's the clever bit we pick a random number and these random numbers are going to be the number of um, the maximum number of cards so it starts at zero and then this is a random so it's going to be which effectively which slot you're going to have out of it and I think we're going to have about six slots uh, let's have a look let's just try five for the moment so it's gonna be five but again I could put it in there but if I copy this to all the cards, when we're doing all our cards, I'd have to redo it. I'd have to change every single one. We're not sure, so let's create another variable and call this, uh, what should we call this? Um, the max uh, x number. Maximum x, x number across. Should really, I suppose, be called, I don't know, um, number of uh rows or something number of columns and this was number of rows i don't know but we're going to call it maximum x number and then we'll create another one called max y value max y number there you go max y number so we've got the maximum x number i think x across one two three four five i think we've got about five of those 
So then the maximum y number is going to be 1, 2. Let's try 3. That's probably about right. Let's have a look. Uh, let's have a look. In fact, we'll set that to 2 for the moment because the reason being is that even though we're going to have three columns, we're going to have column 1, 2, 3, actually, the first time we don't want to multiply it here, we don't want to do, we don't want to go up by 50 for the first one. So we don't want to go 50 up and then 50 and then 50. We want to start at the bottom. So that'd be 0. So instead of 1, 2, 3, it's going to be 0, 1, 2. You'll see why in a minute. So maximum, let's have a look. So this is going to be the minimum x value, how far across. We start here, and then we're going to go across a certain amount, a random amount, between 0 and the maximum x number. And then we'll do the same for the maximum y number. There you go. But there's a problem, because at the moment that max x number is either going to be 0 or 1 or 2. So it's basically going to go like here or here or here, which is no good. And the y, again, it's going to be 0 to 5. So it's either going to go from here to here to here. So that alone is no good. What we need to do is multiply it by that step distance. And that means it will go in those number of steps. Um, there we are. Let's have a look. So which will be the step x. There you go. Step y. There you go. So now hopefully when we press start, it will set the x to a random place from here. Let's have a look. Let's find out. There you go. Perfect. It's about right. Again, if it's not quite right, what we can do later on is we can change it so that it um, we can change the numbers so it makes sure it works right. Um, and all we have to do is change these variables here, and it will change all of the positioning. There we go. Ah, I've just noticed one small problem. I've just messed up the equation slightly there, uh, because you need to pick a maximum, pick a random number from zero to the maximum number of max number, max x number, and then multiply that by the number of steps. That's slightly different to what's here. So let's just put that back in there. Let's take that out of there. So you pick a random number, and then that multiplies by the steps. It's got to go that way around. If you don't do it that way around, um, you know it won't go. It won't go in order. It won't go in the right on the right columns. It's got to be exactly like that. Just be careful with that. So if you notice, you have uh, let's put that down to zero. Um, it's the step x something times step x, and this random thing goes in there. There we go. So it'll look just like that. Now that hopefully now should work that's okay good now this is okay but of course we're gonna have more than one card so there is a possibility that when we lay the cards out at the start of the game that the two cards are touching and that's no good because that means they're in the same they're in the same position so what we're going to do well what we need to do is we'll put it inside of a forever loop so that it keeps moving the position and it keeps moving the position until something happens well what we're going to do we're going to say we're going to say and this is where we go back to our costume here and the costume color because we can say if it's touching a color then we can stop uh, sorry if it's if it's touching the color then we know it's no good so it'll have to keep repeating but if it's not touching the color then we know that it's in a free space and then we can stop so there we go if not touching the color blue then we will stop that script and that script there there you go stop this script so it will keep moving until it's not touching the, uh, another card you can't really see this now, but what I'll do is I'll just duplicate these cards for the moment. There we go. And now if we press it, there you go. You can see it'll only ever move to a free slot. There we go. Really clever, but quite simple. Right, again, I'll delete these spare cards. We're only there for testing. There we go. Delete the spares. We don't want to do all the cards now, because if we did, then we'd have to keep editing all the code for all the cards, and that's no good. So at the moment we've got it so that at the start of the game our card uh, moves to the correct space. What we also have to do as well is make sure that at the start of the game we switch our costume to costume 2, this hidden costume. Um, in fact, let's rename these costumes. Let's call this face down, face down, face up, face up. There we go. There we go. So what we'll do is at the start of the game, we're going to looks and let's switch our costume to face down. There we go. So there you go. It switches to the correct costume and it moves to a random place. Now there's a lot, it's not a lot of code there, but it does do quite a bit of clever stuff. This bit here is the clever bit. 
Good. Right, so next thing, what we're going to do. Well, next we're going to do the mechanics for flipping the card over that goes from one costume to another. We could just say change costume if we wanted, but we want to do something a little bit fancier. Now, what I'm going to use for this is I'm going to use a function. And um, we'll call this flip card. And the reason we're using a function, and we're going to define a function, is because if we put all this code in a function, we can run the code from different places because there might be different reasons and there will be different reasons as to why we want to flip the card over. Uh, we might want to flip the card if we click it. Also if we've got a matching pair, we might want to if we sorry if we've got two odd ones, we also want to flip it, but not if you click it. So this bit of code here is going to run twice. So what are we going to do? Well the easiest bit is uh, let's have a look, repeat five times. Let's just make it a bit smaller. Uh, so change size by minus 10, there we go, that means five times it will change size by minus 10, it will get smaller, and then once it's finished getting smaller, we'll switch to the next costume, and then we'll do the same thing, but the other way around. So this hopefully, if we go flip card, if we run that code, there you go, it changes. So, here we go, and what we want to say, there we go, there we are. And when are we going to do it? Well, first of all, we want it to happen if you click. So let's have a look when this sprite is clicked. Yep. So when this sprite is clicked, we're going to run the code, run that flip card function. There we go. So now, hopefully, there you go. So if I click the card, it flips over, which is brilliant. Perfect. Good. There we go. Good. Now, we also need a way of tracking, keeping track, whether this card is face up or whether it's face down. There we go. So what we want to do here is, there we go, need to create a variable, make a variable. Now this time, this variable is only going to be for this sprite because each individual sprite needs to, um, it, each individual sprite needs to keep track of whether it's up, face up or it's face down. So we'll call this uh, face up, face up, there we go face up and make sure it says for this sprite only there you go and at the start of the game we're going to set the face up to no no we're not face up so this card you can see here cat face up at the start of the game no it's not face up so what happens there you go so now what we want to do is when we click on the card we want to say okay if it's now face up let's let's change that variable to face up if it's face down we we'll just change the variable to face down so let's have a look here we go, here we go, if, there we go, let's have a look, if uh, face up equals no, oh yes, let's have a look if face up equals yes, so if it is face up, what we want to do, we set the face up to, uh, if it's already face up, then we set it to face up to no, there we go, and Otherwise, we set it to yes. There we go. So each time it's uh, this this function is run, if it was face up, it checks it turns to not face up, and if it is face up, and if it isn't face up, it changes it to is. Just watch it here. Let's have a go. So if you're watching this here, as I click it, face up yes, face up no, face up yes, face up no. So we've got a variable that's keeps keeping track of this card, and each track uh, each card independently will be tracked, so we know whether it's face up or we uh, face down. Good. Brilliant. Now, we've got a problem because we've got like five or six cards here or ten cards. We want to limit the amount of cards that face up at any one time. Maximum you want is two. So in order to work out how many cards are, are face up at any one time, what we need to do is say, okay, if it is face up and then we change it to not face up, then we need to have a variable, let's call this um, number of cards up, there we go, number of cards up, and this is for all sprites, because it's going to be a, a global, all these sprites are going to have the same, um, it's the same total number of cards up, so number of cards up, there we go, so if we change it to no, then we need to turn, change the number of cards up by minus one, because it goes down, and the other way around, if we do change to face up, we change it by one. There we go. There we go. So number of cards at one, number of cards at minus one. 
uh, of course, at the start of the game, we need to set the number of cards up to zero. Good. So now, if we click it, just keep an eye here on the number of cards up. Goes to one, goes back down to zero. Goes to one, goes to zero. And if we duplicate the sprite, one, two. Back down to one, back down to zero. So now, we're keeping track. Let's just get rid of that again, because we don't need that for the moment. We're keeping track of the number of cards up, and we're going to use that in a little while. There we go. Good. Okay, so there we go. So when you flip a card, you uh, you change the number. There you go. Number of cards equals one, and uh, it changes the number. Now, what we also want to do is we want to um, we want to have a bit of a trigger here, so that if there are two cards face up now, we need to do something. There's either one of two things that we're going to do. If there's two cards up, if they match, then we're going to need to, um, if those cards match, then we're going to need to uh, get rid of them by hiding them. If they don't match, then we just need to turn them back over. So how do we do that? Well, first of all, we set up a little uh, if statement here at the bottom of our flip card thing to check. And if our number of cards up, where's our number of cards up? If the number of cards up equals two, there we go. Then we just broadcast a message and let's just call this nice and simple two cards up two cards up so now um, that won't actually do anything at the because it's only a broadcast nothing's receiving it but we've got a little trigger here so that if there are two cards up then what we're going to do is we're going to, need to do something so how are we going to do that well what we need to do now is we need to think well how are we going to keep track of which cards are up um, not which cards are up sorry how are we going to work out if two cards up, whether they match or not. Well, if these cards are going to match or not, we need to know what kind of card it is. And if you look here, this cat here, there we go, he's a cat card because he's got a cat face. But the computer is not going to scan that to work out whether there's a cat face or not. So we're going to have to use another variable, um, another variable just to say, okay, um, I'm a cat. So let's have a go at that. So when we start, click. Um, that will show. We need to make sure we show the cat. Show the cat card. Let's start the game, and let's just set our name to cat. Now, this one has to be for this sprite only, because each um, each card is going to have a different name, or each each pair is going to have a different name. Um, and this is a cat. There we go. So variable set. Oh, oh no! I've made a mistake there. Let's just delete that one. The variable name. That's the name of the variable is going to be name because it's the name of the card there we go and that needs to be for this sprite only not cat name for this sprite only there you go and when we press start we show the card and we set our name to cat there you go so this card's called cat there you go he's cat there he is i'm a cat good so there we go good stuff and we also want to change it at the start of the game uh change it to costume two as well Let's have a look, because obviously we don't want it to start. Oh, it changes costume too anyway. I've done that somewhere. I don't know I've done that. There we go. Oh, change costume to face down. Good stuff. Okay. And we've set the face up to no, have we? Yeah, that's okay. Cat face up no at the start of the game. Yeah, perfect. Good. Okay. So, we've at the moment we've got the name of the cat, which is good. Set our name to cat, which is perfect. What we need to do now is we need to, when we receive this two cards face up, what we need to do is we need to find out which two cards are face up. And we're going to use the stage to keep track of this. So let's make some space there. Good. And when we receive two cards up, what are we going to do? Well, how are we going to keep track? The easiest way to keep track is let's just create a list. Um, let's create a list of all the cards up. And then uh, so we'll click on list, make a list. We'll keep a list of all the cards that are face up. Uh, and then we can check that list in a bit. There we go. So cards up. Good. So create a list called cards up. And here we're going to keep track of all the cards that face up. Let's just hide all these. Let's hide all these for the moment. We don't need those for the moment. Um, there we go. So number. there we go. Cards up. So what we're going to do. Well, when we receive cards up, let's just make sure that list is empty. There we go. So let's delete everything of cards up. In fact, actually, let's make sure that, um, let's delete everything at the start. Oh, no, oh, wrong one. 
Let's de delete everything from the start, from cards up as well at the start of the game. So it empties it at the start. Good. So when we receive two cards up, delete all the cards that are from two cards up. Good stuff. Um, and let's broadcast, do another broadcast. And let's broadcast. We need to check if the card is face up. Okay, so let's, let's add another broadcast. Broadcast. There we go. Check if cards up. Now you're probably thinking, well, why do we need this step in between here? Why can't we just um, ask the card here when it broadcasts two cards up there? Why do we just say when I receive two cards up? Why don't we do it here? Well, the reason being is what we want to make sure is we want to make sure that we empty the list before we start adding more card names to the list. Otherwise, what could happen is if we click on that, it could the card could add its name to the list of cards that are face up before it gets around to this code here that deletes all the cards, and that'll mess everything up. So we've got kind of a two-step thing here. First of all, make sure we, we delete all the cards from cards up, and then we broadcast this check if cards up. So what do we want to do if the cards up? Well, what we can do here is we can say when I receive check if cards up, there we go. All I need to do is there we go. Check, I'm not sorry, check if cards up. So check if face up. Let's rename. Let's, let's do another one. Let's do check if face up. Check if face up. Because this, we need to broadcast. This here is going to check if the face of one particular card is um, check if this particular card is face up. So what do we need to do? Well, all we need to do is if this card is face up, we need to add this card's name to the list of cards up. So effectively, if uh, where we are, if face up is yes, then we take the name and we add it to that list. That's nice and simple. Nice and simple. So. There we go. If, where are we at? Nice if statement. If face up equals true, equals yes. There we go. If face up is yes. Then we add our name, whatever's in the name variable, to cards up. There we go. So check if face up. There you go. That's nice and simple. So. Should we see if that works? Let's run that there. If I click it here, oops, has that done that? Oh no, it won't do it yet because there's not. There's only what it only runs if there's two cards face up. So what we'll do here is duplicate. Let's try that now. Let's just run it again. So we have one up, number cards up one, number cards up two, and there you go. There you go. So the cat has been added to the list of face-up cards, which is great. So now we've got two cat cards that are in the list. Good. And all we need to do now is, um, there we go. Let's have a look. Du, 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 du. All we need to do now is we need to say, okay, when we check it, let's have a look. There we go. When I receive there you go. Check your face up. There you go. There you go. So when I receive check his face up, what we're going to do, we'll just wait a little while. I'm going to wait 0 0.1 seconds. The reason we're waiting is because these cards here are going to receive check in the fa if face up at the same time as the stage is going to receive that broadcast. So we need to give them a little bit of time to add their names to that list. Otherwise, it could all go a bit wrong. So we'll just give it 0 0.1 seconds. And we could say, OK, so if we need to say if this item here, number one, is the same as item number two, um, if, there we go, item one of list, there we go. So if item one of cards up is the same as item two of cards up, let's put two, there we go. If item one of cards up is the same as item two um, of cards up, then what we need to do is we need to hide these two cards, the ones that are card up, and we need to delete that list again. So let's have a look. So um, let's just do another broadcast. There we go. And we'll call this hide the cards up. Hide cards. 
up. Hide the cards up. Good. There you go. Hide the cards up. And we'll delete all of that list so that um, it's nice and fresh again, ready for the, uh, the next one. Good stuff. Uh, and we also change the number of cards up to zero. So set number of cards up to zero again. There we go. Good. Done. So what does the cat? Uh, what does the card do when it when it um, when it receives this uh, two cards up thing? There's two cards up. There we go. Let's have a look. There we go. Uh, where are we at? Uh, da, 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 broadcast hide cards up. Yeah. So when I receive hide cards up, what have we got to do? Well, if we are face up, then we hide. There we go. So. If I'm face up, if we are face up, so if face up equals yes, face up equals yes, if face up equals yes, then what we do is we hide, hide, and we also need to change our face up for that card to no again, so it, it's Otherwise, it'll interfere with it. So let's just change it again. Change our face up to set face up. Let's face up. Good. To no. Oh. There we go. Good stuff. So that should hopefully work. Let's just delete this one again. Let's duplicate it. And let's find out if that works. So hopefully now, let's have a look. Click one card. Good, it's going one zero one zero. We click the other card one zero one zero. Notice how I check it bit by bit before doing all of it. I then click on two cards, and there you go. They've gone perfect. Let's run that again. Let's just check that again. Click one, click two. Good, done, brilliant. So we've got that bit there now, which is fine. What we could do now is we could um, duplicate this to create some more and check. Um, it would be a good idea now to check, make sure that if we duplicate it, let's just do that three and four. Let's make sure it doesn't delete the cards if it's the uh, the wrong card set. So let's have a look. Let's let's have a look. Card three. Here we go. Let's get a new costume and let's click on the plane. Let's have the plane. Okay. Now here's a nice little tip. If you click here and then just click on the cat, go go back a layer get rid of the cat you can actually drag the plane in here onto there straight onto your card there we go drag that to there put that in the card which is good that's in the card delete the plane um, and once you delete the plane the only thing we have to do is set our name to um, plane instead of cat there we go just delete that one delete uh, rename that to plane going to do this a few times there you go and then duplicate that hopefully now we go cat plane there we go see and it doesn't change but we've got a problem now because we've just done that and if you notice here um, we've got two cards there but when it does happen it doesn't we need to when we selected two cards that don't match they need to automatically turn over, we need to, uh, back over, turn the face, uh, turn the cards back over. So how do we need to do that? Well, what we need to do here is we need to check, have another check. There we go. That says if they aren't matching, somewhere in here. So if they're not matching, then we need to do something else instead. There we go. So what we'll do here, an if on its own isn't good enough, so we need to swap this for an if else. Let's move it all back into the if else. So if they are matching, which is there, if that item is equal to that one, we do that, as it's just fine. Otherwise, what we do is we need to do another broadcast that says turn all the cards face down, because we want to start again. So there we go, broadcast, turn all cards face down. New message, turn all cards face down. There we go, turn all cards face down. Good. So what does our card need to do when it receives this? Um, face turn all cards face down well it's nice and easy when I receive uh, turn all cards face down I just want to say if we um, turn all cards face down if we are face up uh, we go. 
So if face up equals yes, if face up equals yes, if face up equals yes, there we go. Then we just wait a second and then we'll flip the card. Wait one second and then flip the card. But this is where that flip card block comes really, really in handy because it'll do it all for you. There you go. There we go. Flip card. So now, hopefully, oh, obviously, I've already got this one here. I've already got this on this one. So let's just drag that to the other ones. Temporarily drag, 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 drag. That dragging copies it over into the other ones. So let's have a look. One, two, and then flip. Perfect. Let's try that again. One, two, flip. One, two, delete. One, two, delete. Perfect. Brilliant. Good. So now we've got it doing lots of cards and it's flipping the correct card or it's deleting them as it's need needed, which is good. So now we could add lots of cards, um, but there's a few little bits that we need to do uh, before then. Um, the next thing we need to do is we need to keep track of how many have flipped. Because for the game over system, um, for to win the game, you need to get rid of all the cards. So we need another variable, and this is called um, card or pairs. Let's call it pairs found. Number of pairs found. Uh, pairs found. Number of pairs found. What should we call it? Number of pairs found. There you go. Number of pairs found. There we go. Number of pairs found. That's a global one, number of pairs found. At the start of the game, we set the number of pairs found to zero. We also need to check, um, create another variable because we need the total number of pairs, don't we? Total number of pairs because total number of pairs. There we go. Total number of pairs. Uh, two. How many pairs are we going to have? I don't have nine pairs. There we go. Total number of pairs, nine. There we go. So at the start of the game, the number of pairs found is zero, total number of pairs found is nine, and then all we need to do here is, if we find a pair here, we, uh, number of pairs found, change it, don't set it, but change it by one. So hopefully now, if we click here, number of pairs found one, brilliant, number of pairs found two, there you go. And all we need now inside of the stage is something that says, okay, if the um, if the total number of pairs found is equal to the um, so the number of pairs found is equal to the total number of pairs, then we broadcast the winner because you've won. So let's have a go at that. So if equals 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 the um, there we go. If the number of pairs found equals the total number of pairs, then we broadcast. Winner. Let's have a look. Drag that in there. Broadcast new message. Winner. There we go. Winner. Good. So there we go. Good. Fine. Broadcast winner. So if your number of pairs found equals the total number of pairs, broadcast winner, which is brilliant. So which is good. But what do we want to do if if we've won? Well, if we do win, what we need to do is uh, when I receive winner, we're going to hide all the cards. So when I receive winner. Uh, hide. We'll need to do that for all the cards. There we go. When I receive winner, hide. Duh, 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 duh. Hide all the cards. And what we will do is we'll have a little um, someone to pop along and say, let's really use a dinosaur and tell us how long it took for us to do it. So there's our dinosaur. Um, here's our dinosaur. We want him to hide at the start of the game. So when we press start, let's hide him because we don't want him yet. Uh, but when we um, when we receive winner, what we'd like to do is we need to use this timer. There we go. Looks, say, uh, and we could say the timer. There you go. It should just say the timer when we receive winner. Oh, he needs to show as well, otherwise he won't appear at all, which is good. And that's okay. Da, 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 that's fine. There we go, that should work. What we'll do to test it at the moment, the number of pairs is two. We'll just change that to two just to test it. So let's have a go. Um, there we go. Should we hide a few of these um, variables? Because it seems to be 
quite a few getting in the way at the moment. So one, there we go, not happening. One, two, hey, there you go. So he now says, he says the time there that it took. Good. Let's make that a bit fancier. Let's just make that a little bit fancier. Let's use the join. Join, 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 join. There we go. A couple of joins. Uh, you took timer seconds. There we go. Just put space before seconds so it actually says it, uh, which is good. And also 14.8. It's up to you, but I think I'm going to use the round function um, so that it, it you don't need those decimal places. It just says it without the decimal places. Let's have a look. One. Oh, oh, ah, that's interesting. There we go. One, two. Let's turn that over. You took nine seconds. Excellent. Good. Brilliant. Now, there is a problem at the moment because if you notice, I click, click, click. I can actually show you this here. It lets me do three at once, which can cause a problem. We don't want it to allow you to turn over three cards at once. So how are we going to stop him from turning over three cards at once? Well, we need to do this when your sprite clicked. We only want it to change it if you're allowed to uh, click. So we need another variable here, probably called um, allow click. Let's have a look. So let's go here. Again, another variable. Um, make a variable called allow click. So we're we allowed to click. Global variable, set allow click to yes, because most normally at the start of the game you're allowed to click. There we go. And we'll change it so that it says here, where's that when sprite clicked? When this sprite is clicked, if he's allowed, we just need to change this slightly. If he's, uh, if allow click is yes, if allow click is yes yes there we go then flip the card so how are we going to control whether you're allowed to flip a card or not well what we need to do here is we can stop them when we're checking the um when we're checking to see if the card is face up or not um so if we're checking to see if there's two cards face up there we go so let's have a look so when we receive two cards face up, what we'll do is we'll stop everyone from uh, set allow click to no. There we go. Set allow click to no. No. So when we've got two cards up, stop them from clicking, which should stop them from clicking. And what we'll do here is, there we go. That's fine. And after we've processed all these check if face up, after we've checked if two cards are face up or not, blah, 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 blah. After all that is processed, what we'll do here is we'll set allow click to yes. There we go. Brilliant. In fact, we'll put a little bit of a delay in there as well. Just a slight delay. Let's put a 0 0.1 second delay. Just to stop that there. There we go. So hopefully now let's have a go. Yes, it allows me to click. Good stuff. And it's still working. It does the winner, which is good. But now if I click that, do you see that then? It didn't allow me to do it. Whoops. Let's have a look. One, two. Ooh, what's happening there? Let's have a look. Allow click. Yes, yes. Ah, it's changing it straight back to... If you notice that then it's changing it straight back to um it's changing it straight back to yes so what we'll do here is let's give let's give this let's give it a 0 0.5 second delay half a second or maybe one second one second delay there we go that should sort that out shouldn't it hopefully so we click start click click oh, oh i know what's happening here of course, here, I've changed the code here. Um, if allow click is yes, then do that. I haven't changed it on any of the other sprites. That's why that's not working. I was wondering why it's not working. So what we'll do is we'll just drag that over to the other sprites, over to there, over to there, over to there, and then get rid of the old version of the code. We want to keep the new version, which is here. There we go. Get rid of the old version. Get rid of the old version. There you go. A bit of debugging. So that hopefully now means that if I put... Oh, Let's just do it so I've got the wrong ones. Uh, oh. 
I'm just too good at this. There you go. Nope. Right here, let's have a look. There we go. And now, yeah, see, then it stopped me from clicking it then, which is perfect. That's just what we wanted. Good. So now we've got it, so it'll only allow you to put it in the right place. It'll only allow you to click it when it's allowed to be clicked. Good stuff. Okay. Uh, that's fine. Good. Done. So now at the moment we've got one, two, two cards. Um, the game seems to be pretty much working perfectly. So all we need to do now is we need to add the rest of the cards. So what we'll do first of all, let's just let's hide all these variables because we don't need those. There we go. And let's add some more cards. So now that we've got the confirmed code and it's fully working, now we add our full set of uh, full set of code and we'll see how it goes. Let's see if it works. So here we go. Let's add another pair. Uh, duplicate plane two. Let's click on the plane. Let's go here. Let's add another costume. This does go quite quickly once you get in the rhythm of it. Let's add an apple. Back to face up. Get rid of the plane. Try your apple there, which is perfect. Good. Get rid of the apple. Don't forget to... Ooh, these are all over the place, aren't they? Let's just move those there. I'm looking for my name. Where's my name? There it is. When start, click set name to apple. There we go. There we go. That's better. We'll duplicate that one. This is a bit messy otherwise. There you go. So set his name to apple, which is good. Let's duplicate that again. Oh, that's apple one. One. Apple two. There we go. Again, let's just let's change that to three pairs and let's just check the game again. Notice how I don't just launch straight in and do all of them. I just incrementally check it bit by bit. Let's have a look. Apple, cat, no good. Cat, cat, good. Plain, plain. Apple, apple. There you go. So it's working perfectly. Good. Good. There we go. Duplicate. Let's change that from. Let's rename it to. Oh, I don't know what to rename it yet. Let's go here. Let's add uh, a bat. There we go. Get rid of that. Put a bat in. Let's make it a bit smaller. There we go. There's a bat. Let's delete the actual bat. And again, same thing, change its name to bat. And change it to bat. There we go. And duplicate. That's four pairs. And we can keep going through, actually. Let's just go straight through. Let's find this. So let's quickly go through. Uh, another one. Let's change it to bear. Let's have a bear. There we go. Get rid of the bat. Let's put a bear there. A bit smaller. There's our bear. Good stuff. Let's change his name to bear. Uh, bear. There we go. Bear. Rename it to bear. You don't have to rename them, um, but I find it's easier for debugging if something goes wrong. So there we go. So we've got bat, bear. Let's duplicate that. Let's add another one. Let's see how. Oh, oh I've made an error there. Didn't get rid of my other costume. Be careful of that. If you don't do that, then you'll have a problem. So let's get rid of that. Good stuff. Let's go to what we got a lion. Yeah, lion. There we go. Lion. Put our lion in. There we go. Delete our other lion. Change our name to lion. Uh, lion and change the actual thing to lion there we go and then duplicate now we're starting to get to, starting to get somewhere near aren't we good okay duplicate that now um do, do, do. there we go costume uh, new costume Ooh, fish a fish what else we got penguin i like penguins penguin Delete. There we go. Put our penguin in there. Delete the penguin costume. Let's see how long this takes. 
penguin. Okay, name to penguin. Let's change that to penguin. There we go. Duplicate. There we go. One, two, two more pairs left. Good. Here we go. So, duplicate. Costumes. New costume. Uh, ghost. Yeah, that's the ghost. So, ghost. Obviously, you can choose whatever costume. You can spend plenty of time doing your costumes yourself. There we go. Ghost. Ghost. Get rid of the ghost. There we go. Call it ghost. Change my name to ghost. Duplicate. And that's good. One more. Duplicate. Final one. Costume. New costume. Who's going to be last? Uh, let's have a look. Let's go for witch. There we go. Do a witch. Cut rid of the ghost. Move the witch to there. There we go. Delete the witch. Change your name to witch. Witch. And then change your name here to witch. There we go. And then duplicate. And then hopefully, there we go. Yeah. Ah, perfect, good. And now, oh, we just need to change it to how many pairs? One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Two, eight pairs or nine? Let's find it. it's one pair, two pairs, three pairs, four pairs, five pairs, six pairs, seven pairs, eight pairs, nine pairs. So go back to the stage, change our total number of pairs to nine. And that should now work. Let's have a go. Which, which, let's see how long it takes me to get it. Pingu, Pingu, yay. Cat, bear. Bear, bear. Ghost, bat. Oh. Okay. Oh, it's hard. We go. Oh, no, it's not there. That one's there. That's there. That's one. That one and that one. Yay! 60 seconds. Perfect. Brilliant. And there you go. That's it, all done. So, um, things, if you want to make improvements to it, you could do, um, you could add some background music, you could do some sound effects, um, you could do it so it keeps track of how many clicks that you did, how many times you clicked, um, all sorts of things. Uh, let me know what you think, and uh, subscribe to my channel if you want any more of my videos. Thank you.